Bienvenidos, la gran familia verde, al acto de clausura. Welcome everybody to this closing plenary. It's a huge pleasure to be able to share this with you. I'm here with the very enterprising John Kim, leader of the Green Party in Korea, who's been a great fighter for universal basic wage and is one of the um, young people who is um, developing the most in Korea. I'm from Green Party Korea, and nice to meet you all. For the last four days, I've been very inspired so much by all of you. Our values, principles, aspirations that we shared during the Congress, which has not been fully achieved, but we are getting closer to that. There has been always dark and difficult time, but I feel the solidarity based on friendship here can overcome those difficulties. And let me introduce Manuel Diaz from Venezuela. It is my privilege to present Manuel Diaz, co-president -pre co of Venezuela Green Party. Manuel has been protect protecting the Amazon for 30 years. At the moment, he works. Oh. At the moment, he works titanium fighting against one of the largest ecocides on the planet, protecting a wide area of biodiversity recognized as a World Heritage Site. Please welcome him. Verde Esperanza. Verde. Green hope. Greens 2017, green, the future. Here we are. The time has come not to say goodbye. This is a great welcome to the development, ushering in of, of the green development for the future. Vamos de inmediato. Immediately now, we are. Apart from saying that we will be uh, meeting again for four days, um, looking at everything that's happened at this um, World Greens Congress to see a video. But f first, um, we're going to be told who's with us here. On the top table, the problem is the language, the representative of the Green Party in England. Uh, Melia Womack from Green Party of England and Wales, and Mar Garcia from European Green Party, and Kelly Yen from Global Greens. Bienvenidas. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Well, without any further ado, let us enjoy the video. Hi there, welcome to Liverpool, welcome to the fourth Global Greens Congress and the first ever in the Northern Hemisphere. We hope you have a fantastic weekend and we're looking forward to a great Congress. Around the world, there's so many people who share our dreams. 
people who yearn to feel hope, people are longing for visions, longing for leadership, longing for a better planet. Never forget that we are many and that together we are strong. in which uh, Theresa May started the Brexit process, 2,000 global Greens coming from over 90 countries show that Greens are a force to count on to fight exclusion, extremism, climate change, and economic crisis and unemployment. We've had many interesting discussions, many important discussions, many discussions that showed us how to move forward on fighting the authoritarian movement, on developing new strategies for trade. Only two days before we started this Congress, President Trump signed an executive order that nullified Obama climate commitments. We Greens are here together in Liverpool, determined to keep our fight for climate change because it's the biggest threat humanity is facing. But one thing that has always stood in the center and will stand in the center of green activity globally will be fighting against climate change. This is not just about nature. This is about human beings. This is about offering alternatives to people to create livelihoods, to create stability, to create social justice and economic progress. And this is what is at the center of green identity and this is what we all will unite to fight for. This is what we came to say here and this is what we will do coming back home. Ciao. impressive video. Now I can see so familiar faces on the video that I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah, let, uh, let me introduce our first speaker. Actually, the Jonathan Bartley was due to the speak today, but he has had to go to London for a big TV interview. So we are joined in his place by Amelia Womack, the deputy leader who is the youngest among UK political party. She was elected age 29. While still a member of the Young Greens, she is committed to youth engagement and making young people's voices heard, both in politics and within the Green Party. And it is wonderful to have young women, green politicians like Amelia. 
Please welcome her with a big applause. Green friends, on behalf of the Green Party of England and Wales, I'd like to thank you for coming to Liverpool and to the Global and European Greens Congress. Whether you've travelled for two hours or for 20 to get here, it's each and every one of us that has made this Congress so successful. During the opening plenary, our co-leader Caroline Lucas talked about the politics of hope. She described how seeing you all here made her feel less alone and more ready to continue the fight for a fairer world. We as Greens have risen up around the world to face huge challenges, from climate change to tax injustice, subjects we have discussed here together over the past few days. We face global challenges that at times can seem too daunting, too overwhelming for us to take on. But these challenges will not defeat us because we will not face them alone, not alone as people, not alone as parties, and not alone as nations. We are an international movement of millions. Congress has reminded us that we are a force to be reckoned with, and we'll take this knowledge with us when we go home today. Home to our local challenges. Some of us will be unique to some of these challenges will be unique to particular communities or particular countries and some we all share the UK may be leaving the EU but the Green Party of England and Wales along with the Scottish Greens and the Greens in Northern Ireland will are proud to share common cause with colleagues and friends in Green parties across Europe and around the world What better tonic could we have this week after seeing Theresa May trigger Article 50 than to gather here together? Because, yes, the politics of hate is on the rise everywhere. And yes, the far right is gaining strength. And yes, we live in a world that's currently obsessed with building walls rather than bridges. But this weekend, we have shown that we are a truly global movement, stronger than any forces which seek to divide us. Our movement cannot be contained by borders, and our movement is stronger than short-term populism. And with the dedication of everyone in the room today, our movement will meet the challenges of the century ahead rather than repeat the mistakes of the century that is behind us. As, as Greens, we are united, united by the determination not to settle for second best, by share, a shared hope for the future. We've discussed some big topics over the last few days. With Greens from Germany, Luxembourg, Philippines, Mexico and Senegal, we have talked about fighting for the promises in the Paris Agreement. We discussed how our movement can go further to promote democracy locally, regionally and internationally with Greens from the UK, Germany, New Zealand, Burundi and Mexico. And we learned about how to fight global tax injustice with Greens from the UK, Belgium, Burkina Faso, Peru and New Zealand. Through our discussions, we came to see how we all have a part to play in changing our world. And though at times our individual activism may seem small, we come together at Congress we are reminded that we are all pushing for this change in the same direction. Our collective activism can achieve change on a global scale. We come from different countries, regions and towns, 
But over the past few days, our diversity has been our strength. We have shared our experiences and this has enriched our discussions. We have learned from Greens who are in government and from Greens who are on the front line of climate change. And though we can only come together for a remarkable con global congress like this every few years, we do live in a world where we can instantly message someone thousands of miles away. We're all here and willing to help if we reach out to one another. So let's take this togetherness our shared passion and commitment as we go home to good day. Congress, we are a force to be reckoned with. We are a powerful network of nations. We are an unstoppable movement of continents. And together, we are the ones who will transform the world. Gracias, Amelia. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you very much to the Green Party of England and, and Wales. Thank you for hosting our Global Greens Congress 2017. Now we have our very important hosts. We said, when will the European Congress arrive? And it arrived here in Liverpool in 2017. So we're now going to give the floor to Mod Garcia from the European Green Party. Oops. So. Dear friends, I'm also going to start like Amelia by thanking. It's not very innovative, but uh, it needs to be done. I want to start by thanking all of you for making this Congress a great event. It has been a fantastic event, and that is thanks to all of you. Thank you for your energy, for your discussions, and for your engagement. There was a lot, a lot of work. The steering group knows it. A lot of energy and time investing in preparing it. But you are definitely worth it. It has been, it has been four days full of intense and positive work. We have freely discussed multiple proposals, and responsibly, we have been able to find common ground and compromises that allow us to move forward together. We're now leaving Liverpool, but enriched and ready to continue our mission. What is our mission? It's to offer alternative solutions to the current problems while keeping in mind the future. In these four days, we've met old friends and made new ones too. And together, we've confirmed what a big global green family we are. We truly are. We are a movement with cooperation and networking strongly rooted in its DNA, focused on strengthening the links that will allow us to jointly campaign on fighting climate change, on strengthening democracy and overcoming inequality. Today, today I'm going to talk about us because we deserve it. I'm going to talk about us, the Greens, as activists about our values and about the current political agenda that we need to face. Greens are the best alternative to the most unthreatening challenge that we face today, the social and ecological sustainability of our planet. But not only this, there are 
many other conflicts, and of course we aim to have a voice on them too. But let me insist on a fundamental aspect. The only ecosystem compatible with human life is our planet. And therefore, there is no transformation strategy possible if it does not prioritize the planet. <clears throat> the environmental fight and green activism has many different faces all over the world and too often may imply much sacrifice, pain, and sometimes even death. Today, here, in this closing speech, I want to express my respect and admiration to those who have suffered, and to those, especially, who have lost their lives defending sustainability, environmental and green causes. I'm talking about Chico Mendes or Berta Cáceres. I'm talking about Isidoro, Isidoro Valdenegro in Mexico, Laura Vázquez in Guatemala, Emilsen Mayoma in Colombia, or about Zaida Catalan from Sweden, murdered in Congo four days ago. I'm talking about the 185 environmental victims reported by Global Witness in 2015, about the 116 in 2014, and many others, or about our friends in Belarus, arrested and harassed by an authoritarian regime. To all of them, our recognition and our respect our solidarity to their families and, organiz and organizations, because their fight is our fight. <clears throat> Dear friends, our green values bring not only a philosophical understanding, but among other ideologies, a very different and profoundly moral and ethical perspective. Max Weber allocated in politics the task to manage the future and take responsibility of it. Green values are the best alternative solution to do just that. We have the best solutions needed to preserve future generations from a situation worse than the one we are in. Present generations do not have the right to deprive future generations from the welfare and health they deserve. <laughs> we, the Greens, we do not see the future as the waste bin of an, an unsustainable present, or as a space where we dumped the unsolved problems that allow us to go on with business as usual. And this generational interdependency obliges us to find new social and environmental contract based on intergenerational justice. We need to stop the logic of reciprocity. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And move towards the ethic the ethical logic of transmission. If we want to be the voice of hope and the credible alternative, we need to show that we understand the necessary mediation between the heritage of the past, the priorities of the present, and the challenges of the future. Because this is the real challenge that democratic systems are facing today. This is the real challenge. Today, there is a battle over a value set, and it is green values that are best placed to win it. We also have the responsibility to push our societies to take responsibility for the future. Because it has been us, the Greens, in many multiple formats, through our parties, by us being present in the movement, by our activism, who have been vocal on sustainability, 
who have increased sensitivity and awareness of intergenerational justice and future risks. And here we are today, facing a difficult and complex political agenda. Just shortly before we started our Congress, we witnessed two very negative developments. Amelia has already mentioned one. President Trump signed the executive order that nullified Obama's climate policies. And Mrs. May triggered Article 50. What the current president of the United States is doing is very serious, very serious. He's actually threatening the fight against climate change. And we Greens, we cannot remain only critical. We need to be able to develop strategies. We need to search for new allies that allow us to keep our fight going on despite the USA, the USA stepping back. The role that the European Union will finally play is going to be a decisive one. We cannot give up because there is no time to be lost. We are the last generation able to stop the disasters of climate change. The next generations will only able, be able to mitigate its effects and we need to deliver on that responsibility. Whoops. With regards to Brexit, <clears throat> on uh, March 25th, we celebrated in Rome the 60th anniversary of the European Union. <clears throat> A former well-known minister asked, so what exactly are we celebrating? We Greens, we know very well what we were celebrating, and it is the very existence of the European Union. <clears throat> the very existence of the European Union. Because despite all its difficulties and limitations, despite all its challenges, the Greens still believe today that the European Union is the most democratic and the peaceful political, economical and solidarity entity that exists, the least unfair. That is what we Greens were celebrating in Rome. <laughs> we're, we're fully aware of the current threats and challenges that the EU is facing today. We're fully aware of the disaffection of citizens are showing towards it, of the growth of nationalisms and populism and of their anti-immigration and anti-European agenda. But at the same time, we must not forget that it has been in Europe where those national populisms have been recently defeated. In Austria, with the success of Alexander van der Bellen, and in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, where the right wing did not achieve what they wanted. Aren't those huge, huge defeats? I want to formally congratulate also here our friends from Groen Leagues for their fantastic results. <clears throat> and we really hope that the next defeat will be for the Front National of Marine Le Pen in the upcoming presidential elections in France. <clears throat> 2019, the next European elections, they will be difficult. They will demand compromises because Europe needs to reset. We Greens will sit at the table with a preservative attitude to consolidate what we have already achieved, with a reformist attitude to what, what, towards what needs to be improved, and with a decisive attitude towards what still needs to be invented. That's how we will sit at the table. Because we're aware Brexit happened and it has been painful. We cannot ignore it. The discussion during the campaign demonstrated exactly what I said earlier. The majority of youth voted to remain. A big uh, majority of elderly voted to live, compromising the future of the young the present fears conditionating the future of the young. 
We, went, we Greens want to transcend the result of the referendum with a strict negotiation strategy, yes, but nobody will know what Brexit will result in. But we advocate for a negotiation that keeps in mind the interest of both the EU and the UK citizens and that keeps the four freedoms inseparable. Dear friends, <clears throat> I would like to conclude by talking about one of the essential actors of change, about women. Without the empowerment of women, there is no possible change. Without our leadership, there is no possible rebellion. And without the recognition of our rights, there is no real change. <laughs> this Congress has taken a lot of work, but also has given a lot of satisfaction the effort was definitely worth it. I repeat it again. John Lennon said, imagine all the people sharing all the world. I can only imagine it together with all of you. Thank you very much. Un fuerte abrazo. And have a safe trip home. Thank you. Thank you so much, Garcia. Now it's time to introduce Kelly Yen, who has been so busy for making this Congress successful. Yeah. She, yes. she was the former convener of the Asia-Pacific Greens Federation, and now she is the coordinator of the Global Greens. Her energy and passion always encourage me to step further. Welcome, Kelly. I'd like to build on what Amelia and Mar have just said by speaking a bit about the function of the Global Greens. In my eyes, the Global Greens is the community movement of individuals. It is also what in Chinese we call the Dao Chang, it is the field of practice, the practice field, the ring where you practice your martial arts. And in this ring, we push against one another. We learn how to ground ourselves, be firmly rooted, and push against one another. Learn how to be relaxed, agile, responsive, and quick, and calm. And we develop all those skills both in our minds, in our spirits, and in our muscles, and in our bones. And that's what we are for one another as a community in this practice field, where we learn the skills and the art of leadership. The leadership of, within ourselves, of how to be self-led. And in my own experience, that's, that's what it was, from signing up as the webmaster to, for the Asia Pacific Greens Congress, uh, and then uh, opportunities arise and they asked who would step up and my hand just kept going up and I think the same is for all of you. Before you knew it, you're leading some committee and before you know it, you're coordinator of the Global Greens or something like that. <laughs> but what I found is that um, I, didn't, I didn't think of myself as a politician or an activist, um, but through all of these activities, we learn what we care about. And we learn what we are willing to uh, be vulnerable for. And, what, and we learn where to find our courage to do things that frighten us. So that we can, in those moments that are so important, speak truth to power. Do what you, the best of you wishes to do at that moment and to step up to it. We learn skills how to talk on stage, how to debate, how to make an argument. All these things um, is the work of activists like yourselves. And so I think the work of this, the purpose of this Congress is to or 
inspire one another to always reach further inside of ourselves, stretch further out there, to organize ourselves so that together we can have a greater impact, and to amplify ourselves so that wherever we are, even though we're an individual, our voice has this sort of global impact, and we can be heard by our friends that we make today over coffee, by people we'll never meet, and um, we'll never see the full knock-on effect of that. But to me, that's what leadership means. It's not the Napoleon leading out in front or being perfect or anything like that. It's the journey of ever developing awareness about the impacts you have around us, even the impacts we can see and the growing awareness of that. So it's a lifelong journey. And so I think the message of this Congress, especially at this time, is the importance of being self-led. For me, when I saw Trump get elected, it was just um, a clear message that you can't expect someone else to save you. You can't expect that your candidate will get elected or that um, someone who is in a position of power will do the right thing. Uh, so who will? And it has to be ourselves and it has to be our friends and those who we influence through our leadership. And so that direction, that clarity has to come from inside. Thanks. And that's why I think one of the most important elements of the Global Greens, of us, is our hearts. It's our hearts that get us out into the streets, that get us out of bed in the morning, give us a sense of reason why we're going to take on the day. It's our hearts that um, define our ideology, in effect. Because where I see there's ever-growing disconnects in the world, we see them in the newspaper all the time, all people vilifying one another, finding scapegoats. What defines green ideology is that we're all about connection. We're all about compassion. We're all about caring for one another. The politics of caring is something I learned from the Australian Greens, because that's their message, welcome refugees, we care about you. Politics of caring, we care for the trees, the animals who don't speak our language, but we'll care about them anyway. We'll care about soil, we'll care about the future that we won't live to see. And so the most important message that I would like to, to express to all of you is to care for one another. I've had the chance to travel around and visit a lot of green parties and I, I can see all the conflicts that happen inside of our family. It's really hard uh, trying to bring our ideals into action. It's a lot of, a lot of struggle. Um, so care for one another, be kind to one another. Let the Global Greens community be our sanctuary because it's a hard fight out there and we, we're in the trenches and we're the underdog in a lot of cases. So we need one another, so be good to one another. Take the leap of faith when you're scared. Talk to your adversary, reach out to them. I remember the Dalai Lama says, whenever he meets someone, he just thinks, I am meeting another human being. And I find that really helps even when I'm meeting someone with a big title and it's kind of scary. I'm meeting another human being and I feel privileged that we are sharing our moment in time together. We both are alive at this moment. And on our last days, even if we've never met before, we will have that kinship that we were alive together. So let's use this lifetime, make the most of it, do what we can, be kind, be loving, be the change which we seek to see in the world. Thank you. Quiero que todos nos pongamos de Well, could we all stand up, please? <laughs> Let's all stand up to thank you all for the coordination of the Global Greens. Thank you so much for organizing this. Thank you. Big applause. Señalaba... 
we're so proud to have Margaret here. And we would like to thank her. And we'd like to thank Kelly as well. All of us, all of us love you so much. And you will always be in our hearts as Greens around the world, I can tell you. And this presence of the Green Party of England and Wales, the European Federation, the Global Green Coordination, I think that you know the future is bright. This Congress marks progress and hope for us all. And I wanted to also share a just clever video with you, who is a, a candidate this year from the Netherlands, and also our colleague Kron Linz. They were in fact the biggest winners, the biggest winners, and they're going to share their experience through this video that we're about to see. Green friends, I'm sorry that I'm not with you in Liverpool. These days we have to negotiate to form a new government here in the Netherlands. The elections were, I think, two weeks ago, uh, and they were historic for GroenLinks. Never in history we were as big as we are right now. We have 14 seats in Parliament, a win of 10 seats. Um, our campaign was, was great. It was a, a big success because of all the people who were involved. More volunteers, more people who donated, uh, more people who were willing to work for us. Uh, we built a campaign that was more than just a campaign for a party. It was more like a movement. Uh, and that's what I think all the green parties in Europe need. You have to build a campaign based on hope and change, uh, empathy, tolerance, freedom. A message of hope can bring a lot of people together. And that's what we have to do. A lot of voters, they are tired of the, the, all the parties in the center and they're looking for an alternative. And for too long, the only alternative there was was the populists at the right. I think we need a new alternative. And we can be this alternative. We showed it these elections and I hope you will show it in the upcoming elections in Europe. Dear friends, for the upcoming weeks, maybe months, we have to negotiate for this new government in the Netherlands. And it's our ambition to make sure that it will be the most green, most social government in history of our country. Uh, after the negotiations, I hope there will be time to meet and to, uh, to share our experiences with you. I wish you all the best in the upcoming elections. Uh, I think that our green ideas and our ideals are important to our countries and are important to the European Union. I wish you all the best and good luck in all the upcoming campaigns. See you. Yeah, it's really great to see Yeshi Clever on video. And the recent success of Growings shows hope to our green family. Mm, looking back, in the last four days, we shared our achievements so far, and now we go further to the future. Isabella Rabin said on the first day, we need more Greens on, in government, and we need more Green presidents. So let's meet the two of Green presidential candidates, Frank Habineza from Rwanda and Pekka Havisto from Finland. Please welcome them. First, let me introduce Frank Habineza. Dr. Frank Habineza entered Rwandan politics in 2009 by publicly declaring the formation of the Opposition Democratic Green Party of Rwanda as alternative to the dominant ruling Rwanda Patriotic Front of President. He is also the president of the African Greens Federation a coalition of 30 political parties and movements across the African continent. Dr. Habineza was born in Uganda in 1977, where his parents were staying as political refugees. He has contributed so many things to African civil society, but he resigned from all civil society since he joined the opposition activities. Um, 
In 2010, he was forced to leave his country and sought refuge in Sweden. And he went back in 2012 and continued his democratic struggle and finally managed to get the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda officially registered 2013. Please welcome Frank Habineza. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me uh, to be here with you today. And uh, we are very uh, pleased for uh, all the organizers of uh, this uh, wonderful Congress. Uh, as the President has said, I come from Rwanda. It's a, a country from East Africa, well, both East and Central Africa. Um, Rwanda, most of you know it uh, because of the genocide. Uh, but of course, uh, we have, the country is moving forward after 20 years. Uh, we've been working very hard to establish uh, democracy. Uh, of course, as you've known, after the genocide, uh, the party which uh, stopped the genocide was a revolutionary movement, and uh, it's been difficult for that party to become a democratic party because uh, they were military men. Uh, so uh, because of uh, the conditions, uh, lack of uh, democracy, uh, lack of uh, proper justice system, uh, problems with the media, the society, uh, we said, well, we needed to have a political party which would take care of our country, the natural resources, but also take care of our democracy and make sure that we have respect of human rights. So we established this party in 2009, and uh, it was not easy, of course. We were beaten physically in the Congress uh, where we had more than 1,500 uh, physically beaten by people even who had uh, even pistols, and uh, some of our people were arrested. Uh, others, of course, were put in prison. Others were forced in exile. And the worst was in 2010, when we were trying to run for elections, when my deputy president, Andreka Gwarisreka, was assassinated. It was very horrible. He was beheaded. And uh, yeah, so by that time, I was forced, of course, to leave the country and for, go to exile in Sweden, where I stayed for two years. And of course, with support from all the Greens all over the world, the Australian Greens, the Swedish Greens, and different governments, uh, I was able to go back in 2012, and we finally got our party registered in 2013. The party has been uh, trying to do a lot of work as the only registered opposition party, and uh, the president, uh, current president, has finished uh, officially two term limits uh, for 14 years, and uh, two years ago they said, well, that's not time over, he wants to have another term, and we said no. Uh, Mr. President, uh, your term is over. You have to respect the Constitution. Uh, we took our case to the Parliament. Uh, it did not work. We took it to the Supreme Court. We had a case. But in the case, we want something uh, because we, they wanted to have open term limit for the President to be there forever, like in Zimbabwe it is. Um, we said no. We need to, to maintain two term limits. Also, we needed to reduce the term limit from uh, seven years to five years. So in the final draft of the Constitution, they accepted it reduced from seven years to five years, which was a plus of what we were asking. And then uh, they also accepted to uh, maintain the two term limits in the Constitution, but they included another article which allows the, the current president to stand for another seven years term and two more other five years term. So basically, it was a win and lose situation. Uh, but we said, well, if this is the case, we are not going to give up. We are going to stand for elections to make sure that uh, all the people who voted for the no and the referendum, they, they are there, and we know there are many, and we know well, we are standing for democracy, we are standing for social justice, standing for human rights respect, for media freedoms. We said we will have a chance to win this election. So the party confirmed me as a candidate two weeks ago. And uh, the election is in August, and we know this election is a very important three months remaining, because we here in Africa, it's a big chance uh, for us to win. One of the progressive people uh, whom we're emulating, our friend Dr. Iman Nur from Egypt, who tried to stand against Mubarak and all difficult circumstances, uh, you know, uh, he, won, he almost won, but um, the, the system was so difficult for him to be elected, and he was put in prison, 
uh, is now in exile. So we have faced such kind of situations in Rwanda. We hope that in this election, we will have a chance to win, that you will stand with us, so that we don't become like Ayman Nur, who, who, who left election and going to prison, spent there for five years. I hope you understand that uh, even if I go to prison, you continue to be standing with me, so that uh, I know that you are, we are family, we are together, <laughs> that you not ignore me. Yeah. 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 But you not abandon us like you have stood with us in this struggle. I hope you continue standing with us because uh, it's a struggle for human rights, struggle for dignity, a struggle for protection of our natural resources, a struggle for peace because we are in the Great Lakes region, a, country, a, a region where it's full of conflicts in Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, we have a lot of people there and so many deaths, uh, rapes for women, and you've seen in Burundi the political conflict there. You, even in Uganda, there have been, there have been problems in northern Uganda. So we are in a, a place where we are prone to civil conflict, to, to wars. And so if there's good news in Rwanda, if a green candidate wins in Rwanda, it means there will be peace in the whole region. And we have a big chance to win. Yeah. I thank you very much, and I hope you'll be with me. Thank you very much. Well, what we want to do is wish you great success um, in that oasis of freedom to our brother from Africa, Frank, and support him in this great election that, as he said, will be in August this year. But also, uh, we have another leader with us today, another green presidential candidate, Pekka Havisto the fin Finnish presidential candidate here with us from this important European continent. Let us wish him the greatest success. Dear friends, it's uh, nice to be again in a global green conference. I think my first conference was in Canberra. Thanks, Margaret and others for organizing all this global green work and, and these conferences. I was also in Sao Paulo, unfortunately not in Dakar, but this is my third green conference. Yesterday I was walking some streets here in Liverpool, like Penny Lane, and looking into the house of George Harrison and uh, Art College of John Lennon, and uh, I was starting to think how uh, good ideas can spread like Beatles idea and maybe the green ideas are also starting to spread from Liverpool all over the world. Yeah. And like uh, Mar Garcia, I also want to express my solidarity and, and thoughts to all those who are not present in this uh, hall today. First, for the reason that they are maybe harassed or detained or even some have lost their lives because having be, been green activists or environmental activists. I had an opportunity to follow the Berta Caceres court case in Tegucigalpa last spring, sitting there with the family members, with the friends, uh, with the villagers who are still fighting for the environment, who are not taken back by all this uh, pressure by the government and authorities against the environmental activists. We really have to think and have full support to these people. And of course, we have to have support also and, and our thoughts with those who, with the st for the stupid European Union or UK visa regulations, couldn't arrive here today. <laughs> but we know, that, uh, we know that the green ideas cannot be prevented by walls or, or uh, uh, borders. Uh, these are now spreading all over the world. You know, I'm coming from Finland. We had our first city council members elected in 1980 in, in several Finnish cities and our first members of parliament in 1983. At uh, that time, it was some kind of surprise that the Greens as a movement could get parliamentary seats. We had, for example, one handicapped 
candidate uh, in a wheelchair, Kalle Könkkölä, who was then elected to the Finnish parliament as the first ever uh, gentleman in the wheelchair in the Finnish parliament. And we have been continuing uh, uh, our success in the parliamentary elections. Now we have 15 seats out of 200. We have also the Green Ministers actually in four different governments, in you know, different government coalitions. We have had not only Minister for Environment, but also a Green Minister of Justice and Green Minister of Labour and a Green Minister for International Development and even a Green Minister for State Ownership and even a Green Chancellor of Justice in Finland. So this has been our part. And of course, we also took part in the last presidential elections in Finland. We got 37% of the votes, which, which was maybe the best, best result. I, I happened to be the candidate also that time. <laughs> and um, uh, as some of you know, I'm living in a same-sex uh, marriage or same-sex partnership with the Ecuadorian. <laughs> Mr. My, my, my partner is Antonio from Ecuador, and we, you know how campaigning is. You go to the small locations, maybe places where people have never seen anyone from Ecuador or never seen anyone in a same-sex uh, couple and, and so forth, and we went to the pubs, you know, where some of the local skinheads were sitting, <laughs> un unemployed youth, and with all their tattoos and things like that, you know, karaoke pub, and, uh, and, but the pub keeper said, hey, please come here, and make a little bit program for these people. And I took the microphone and explained, elections are coming, president's elections and so forth, and the guys were looking behind their pins, us and their very suspicious manner and not moving at all. And then I said to Antonio, hey Antonio, could you say something to these people as well? And then Antonio took the mic, he speaks fluent Finnish nowadays, living 20 years in Finland, and he started to explain how it's to be a foreigner in Finland, study, work and do things. And then suddenly something changed. People say, hey, Antonio, you are a good guy. You are working. <laughs> yes. And, and somehow you, 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 you were thinking that you meet the most xenophobic, maybe most racist people in the country, and suddenly you were very good friends with them. And this is about what campaigning is about. And as, as Greens, we have to meet those people who are not yet Greens. And we have to talk to them, we have to explain what are our values, what are our thoughts, why we are doing the things we are doing. On our uh, Finnish uh, Greens program, I think we have always had a wide agenda. Not only environment, but very deeply the social justice issue has been there. We have all the time been having the feminist movement with us, the handicapped people, sexual minorities, ethnic minorities, even Finnish indigenous people, the Sami people from Lapland, and, and so forth. We have been also always believer on technological development. We have been saying that energy saving, yes, it needs more science, it needs more technology. We are in favor of the clean technologies. We, we are looking for the new technical solutions to save the world. We are also linking with the entrepreneurs, with the small and medium business community, and we think there is nothing, nothing uh, uh, which, which we would criticize or being against of entrepreneurship in the Greens. And this is our difference from the leftist parties. And as many Green parties, we are also uh, in favor of peace movement, we have many pacifist activities, activists and so forth, but at the same time we have a realistic policy on defense and security issues, being a small country next to big neighbor and so forth. Uh, we have actually in our ranks nowadays peacekeepers, people from the military, people from the police forces, and people of course very active in the civilian, civilian crisis management. I think security defense is also something that the Greens has to get involved. And of course, green economy, which was discussed yesterday, has all the time has been a core issue in, in our, uh, our policies, but at the same time creating jobs, but also creating the basic income for people in the new type of economy has been one of our goals.
I think today we are living in a very challenging times. We are looking, of course, to crisis all over the world. We are looking very sad uh, human suffering in places like Syria, uh, Iraq, Libya, South Sudan, Yemen, just name it, all these crises. We are also witnessing, I would say, very unfair Russian occupation of Crimea, uh, Russian harassment of Ukraine currently. We are following, of course, the hate speech that is spreading around. We are following the fake news, alternative truths. We are following, unfortunately, the UK's leaving of the European Union. We are following the President Trump's a policy against uh, the world Muslim community and also his policy to undermine the environmental agreements like the climate agreement. I think we are coming in a more uncertain times in this world. But at the same time, there is some positive news. And I think when in 2015 the Agenda 2030 was adopted in the UN about the sustainable development, about the coming 15 years, it has climate in it, it has protection of biodiversity in it, it has the good governance in it. I think the Agenda 2030 is also our green agenda. But for us as global greens, it is now time to speak out. There is an alternative to hate speech, there is an alternative to discrimination and marginalization, there is an alternative to fossil fuels, there is an alternative to climate change. There is an alternative to military spending, alternative to wars, alternative to conflicts, and uh, increased military budgets. This alternative is green. Thank you so much, Becca. For me, as a basic income activist in Korea, I learned a lot from Finland, Greece. And I really hope uh, and Becca and Frank win the election. Please, please give them a big applause again. Yeah. Now it's time for the declaration. There are three hosting organizations of this Joint Congress 2017 have agreed to conclude the four days of intensive meetings with a declaration on how we Greens face the most burning issues ahead of us. Please welcome Evelyn Hotbrook from Ecolo Belgium. Thank you very much. Well, I'm afraid you can't leave Liverpool without this declaration, the Liverpool Declaration, which I believe you've all received. Declaration of Liverpool. This text is a text that was drafted by the Global Greens, by the European Greens, and by our friends from the Green Party in England and Wales. Priority. Le texte avec nos priorités. Ce sera. This is the text of our priorities, and it may well be your bedtime reading over the weeks to come. We very much hope that this declaration will serve as an inspiration for you in your respective parties when you return home. Now, we're not going to read out the whole text, but it gives me great pleasure. De demander à... It gives me great pleasure to ask three of our members to come up to the rostrum and to read a part of this important text. For the Global Greens, it's Dorothy Nabeva from Uganda. Borislav Sandov for EGP from Bulgaria. And Jessica Norsey for the Green Party England and Wales. Climate change is the biggest threat we face. A threat to people, to human society, 
to the environment and to the future. We Greens commit to acting swiftly on climate change to meet the Paris Agreement target of limiting warming to not more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. We Greens are committed to protecting and restoring biodiversity and critical ecosystems, including forests, oceans, ice caps, and mountain glaciers. We will not be successful in tackling climate, environmental, and social issues without a vigorous democracy. We believe that particularly democracy allows citizens to develop effective solutions to the problems we face. We Greens advocate a more equal society. Inequality is damaging to all. And stark inequalities in income and wealth create poverty and lead to social corruption. Whilst globalization has created wonderful opportunities for social progress and new possibilities, the negative side has included huge growth in wealth and power of a tiny minority. Inclusion and equality is the key of improving quality of life for everybody. We Greens want to build a new economy of, by, and for the people that protects ecosystems and respects nature. Ecological issues, social justice, democracy, and peace are linked. Only where people have democratic control and enjoy civil and human rights, including women's rights, will there be opportunities to solve contradictions peacefully. The Global Greens, as agents of change, promoting a sustainable, just, peaceful, free and democratic future for human civilization on Earth, have joined innumerable battles in pursuit of our shared values. We pledge to cooperate even more strongly in the future, to make the fundamental transformations needed, to return to future generations the world that we have only borrowed from them. We Greens are for a politics which is both practical and visionary. We believe in a society that respects diversity, promotes peace, creates real democracy, challenges inequality, and above all, respects both nature and future generations. These green values set out in our charter are common to green parties right across the planet. And while we respect the diversity of green parties, we hold both to common principles and a practical approach to putting them into action. Thank you. Gracias, Evelyn. Thank you, Evelyn, from the Belgian Ecolo Green Party. And thank you, of course, to Dorothy, to Borislav, and to Jessica. This declaration is a declaration that we now need to promote. We need to disseminate it. We need to make sure that this declaration is helpful for us in terms of strengthening the global greens. Now, Welcome the steering group who made this Congress successful and wonderful. Evelyn continues to introduce all the contributors. So I can ask to the steering group all the team that we meet since more than one year, quite every year, to come on the stage. Everybody. Who are you? Armin, Mark, come on.
And now I have to make the, the thanks, a lot, a long list of thanks, but we have to do it. Then, of course, to the, to the team. The city of Liverpool, they offered this venue to us with very good conditions. It's very long, huh? <laughs> Our host, the Green Party of England and Wales, for all they contributed financially and with their men and woman power. <laughs> Thank you. Without money, we can do nothing. Thank you to the financial contributors, the Westminster Institute from United Kingdom, the Green Forum from Sweden, the Dele Ling Foundation from Netherlands, the Green Group in the European Parliament of Brussels, all Green parties from Europe and around the world that contributed, but some considered substantially, the Flemish Green Party, Groen from Belgium, the Norwegian Greens, the Australian Greens, the New Zealand Greens, all the individual donors, and not for, to forget the EGP that saved money over five years to finance this event. <laughs> and uh, money without women and men is nothing. So the people that helped us technically at the EEC, great job done. There is, uh, there is Joe, the event manager, Xavier and his crew for all the technical things. The, the interpreters, the remote transcription. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Merci beaucoup, la traduction. The cameraman for the live streaming. The many service people at the Congress Center for being helpful and friendly. Thanks. Here is a little bit like the Festival de Cannes. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not about it. Thanks for all that made this program possible. The speakers, the conveners of the sessions, the people that manage the resolution. It's not easy. Johan, Alex, and others from the Global Greens, Yannick, Gwen, and others from the EGP. Bert Boer and Lena Lindström for the financial management of the Congress. Cécile Lowers and Jean-Pierre Dulin for the registration. Eva Goss and Susanna for fundraising. Ricky Knight, Ricky Knight, <laughs> who pushed within the Green Party of England and Wales to apply for hosting this joint congress in the UK and who organized the musical program. We will never forget the Beatles of Liverpool. Never, never, never. <laughs> Thomas, who was the DG volunteer last night. <laughs> Steve Emmott, who fought for this project within EGP and the Global Greens and is always in our heart. And finally, you two, all members of the Congress Steering Group, representative for all the staff, Louisa from GPEW, a big applause. You have nothing without Louisa. Yolene from EGP. Kelly, of course, you know, from the Global Greens. Never forget all the volunteers 
from GPEW. Thank you, the volunteers. They are not here, but they, I know that they are somewhere. And then, of course, without you, nothing possible. Thank you to everybody. And finally, of course, thank you to Margaret. So finally, the Congress is closed. Now you can, now you are allowed to go home now. <laughs> See you at the next Congress and have a safe trip home. Thank you. El Congreso. The Congress is officially closed. Congress of 2017 is closed. And of course, we'll see each other again in Asia very soon. Thank you. Thank you.